One Voice audience, readers, uh, subscribers, everyone who looks through One Voice stuff, whether they be videos, memes. This is the first time for some of those who are beside me. Our, so, our newest members. Yeah. On my left is Joyce. On my right is... Iggy. Iggy. <laughs> Iggy slash John slash yes, love name. Pastor Luigi. Yeah. Oh my god. And of course, there at the end is uh, Noah. <laughs> Our big topic is. Does God speak through movies? What are our favorite movies and why? You have to jam. You first. You first. Me first. Okay. Jen, okay. Jen, and, and it's a very girly movie. Sleeping Beauty. I, I just love the idea. Uh, the, the dream. The little girl dream of being awakened by a man. Or perhaps yeah. you like this people. Oh. That. <laughs> Now it's my favorite movie. What are my favorite movies? <laughs> Narnia. Narnia. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's an A-lister, of course. The Sound of Music. Oh, oh yes. 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 I love Hairspray because I love musicals. Yeah, okay. perhaps the most amazing musical movie I have watch ever because of the retro thing and the beats that they have. I really love that movie. Second would be the Minions, just ah, because of okay. the comedy and everything that they have. Because I love comedy. Perhaps if P Pinoy genre, Derek Ramsey and Jenny Del Mercado. Wait, oh, so in this only piece, yeah, in this only piece because of the comedy also part and Sorry, like comedy. the whole good that you all have. For those of uh, our audience who don't speak. Um, Tagalog, when you say hugot, this is like the the deep, dark, ouchy yeah. oh, it's, lines. It's, pull, it's yeah. pulling, up, pulling at the heart strings. Yeah. Yeah. So hugot yeah. is the pull. So. That's, yeah. that's a very good translation for hugot up. Pulling yeah. up heart strings. <laughs> I did the research. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Okay, so Noah, okay. how about you? Um, one movie that really made me want to pursue film in the first place was Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh. Like, wonderful. like I've watched a lot but um, nothing beats it for me because the level of love that they put in the production is like I haven't seen it in any other movie like the way they craft the things. The story too, Good and Evil, it's very um, it's something that everyone can relate to. I don't know, it just takes you into another world, which I think movies should do. Yeah. And then another movie that comes to mind is Children of Men. It's a dystopian sci-fi movie about um, a future where mankind cannot produce babies anymore. And so this one guy, he's like disillusioned and everything, and he comes across this lady who's been pregnant for the first time in 20 years. So he has to, so he has to rescue her, or rather rescue the baby that's gonna come out. So I like that because it really sucks you into the world. It makes you really believe like, wow, this could happen if ever this happened. You know, one of the questions that we have is, uh, does God use movies? Does he speak through movies? And do they have to be Christian movies? Because we do have a lot of good Christian movies out there. You know, uh, yeah. movies like War Room or Facing the Giants. I love The latest yeah. movie, Breakthrough. Was it uh -huh. Breakthrough or not? Or Breakthrough, Breakthrough. Does God speak through uh, movies that are quote unquote secular? I have encountered a few people who found themselves um, more touched, or they say they've experienced God more through the secular movies, or rather, even films that are not really made by, say, devout Christians. Like, for example, um, yeah. Passion of the Christ is one. You have this guy, Mel Gibson, he's like Hollywood, and then like, even after the movie was made, he slipped into a really bad alcoholism and like the things that he said after but then God was able to use someone that broken to create something that was like wow it, different mm -hmm. you know and um, I won't go too much into it but one thing I like is like they made it into Aramaic and Greek and the amount of research they put there like the amount of effort they put into telling the story of Jesus I think we'll go into this more later but it just goes to show that if God can use someone like Mel Gibson or if God can use things that we don't expect to make his message, um, to let his message be heard, then I think that movies can be used, whether secular or yeah. otherwise. Yeah. I'm thinking a while ago, if God can use a handkerchief to heal the sick, mm -hmm. God can use a movie to speak something yeah. to us. But I believe God used movies to give pictures of yeah. the things that he had. Even though, how did the movie was created? Mm -hmm. I, I always love to see that Behind the scene, behind the scene. Mm -hmm. yeah, in the movie, because it could also speak a lot of 
how the movie was created and how could God move also behind the scenes. Many times, things that we don't uh, see when it comes to issues, like for example, just for example, things that have to do with the Holocaust. You know, that's like mm-hmm. really far away, at least from the Philippines, like Israel, <laughs> Philippines, Germany, Philippines are like uh, two separate continents away, you know, right. oceans away. So, you know, things even that have happened before, you know, the time factor being big, and yet the movies allow us to to touch on that pain. You, um, movies allow us to touch on on a certain um, sentiments mm-hmm. yeah. you know, that we wouldn't know uh, unless we watched. Yeah. yeah, There was a story in the Bible when Elijah, a prophet, he was so discouraged and he hid in a cave. So there was a great strong wind and it tore the stones on, uh, of, a, of the mountain. That's how strong the wind was. But then the word of God emphasized that God was not in the wind. And then second, there was an earthquake, but God was not in the earthquake. And then there was fire, but God was not in the fire. And then there was a gentle breeze, and that's when God spoke. There's a lot of um, stories in the Bible that God spoke unexpectedly <laughs> through a donkey, through yeah. the burning bush, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So if God can speak through a burning bush, why not in movies? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think movies are a good, great, great way of educating people too. Yeah. yeah. Like another example is like, of, yes, like the Holocaust, bringing up certain issues. Entertainment is actually a big factor in our society mm-hmm. yeah. now. Like that we crave entertainment, right? And the best way to get a message across is um, through that, through, mm-hmm. the, through the means of entertainment. And one thing interesting nowadays, and I, I was talking to Atajan about this, is the surge of documentaries. Without that, um, if it was purely just text or you wouldn't get the audience that you need. So rather, it opens up avenues yes. when you really want to get your message across. Mm. And so that can be a, both a good and bad thing depending on what your message yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. another thing, mm. parang movies is w- one of the best way to tell a story. Mm. Yes. Oh, yeah. And God is the greatest storyteller. Yes. You know, before we even think of twists and plots god did it eh? yeah and there's something that we picked up uh, from from god himself yeah. mm-hmm. you know it's the, the ability the desire also for stories not to tell a story uh, to live through stories i mean yeah i agree with you perfectly um completely if if uh, god is a good storyteller then we should be. We ought to be yeah. good storytellers. It's part of the creative genius. Yeah. Exactly. Oh God. And, and it's sharing the gospel. It's sharing the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'll be the, the greatest story, right? Yeah. So we yeah. have. I think it is somewhat our duty to use the tools that we have. Mm-hmm. Yes. And for some of us whose whose uh, duty involves media, we should use that too. And uh, this is where power also comes into play, mm-hmm. um, and the potential to do good and evil, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Uh, um, media, movies, cinema. I mean. Uh, uh, what if your story is bad? Or what if it's a mix? Or what if your story is good, but there are bad elements? <laughs> what do you think about that, guys? I think also another factor is like, what if your story is good, but the execution is bad? Mm. Yeah. That's also a thing. Like, yeah. in terms of Christian movies, I'm kind of in the mix. Like, there's some that I like, and then there's some that I really yeah. don't like. Like, the gospel is there, but sometimes it's just manufactured in a way it's just like you're recording a message from church yeah. instead of actually... Um, making a compelling story that's believable. Yeah. Like I think Christian filmmakers, sorry if this offends a lot of people, but like sometimes Christian filmmakers tend to shy away from rea- yeah. like the reality. Um, the Christians are the good guys and the atheists or the sinners are the bad, bad guys. Where yeah. in reality, sometimes it's the other way around or it's greater <laughs> than that. So I think yeah. um, the stories that are more believable, like you have Christians who you see the struggles and mm-hmm. then you see like sinners wherein they do have a good side, you know, like real life. That's how people should approach it rather than just sanitizing or making it completely like because it's good, sinners, evil, you know. Yeah, like there's yeah, a the dichotomy. Yeah. yeah, and this is where also, again, I mentioned the word secular a while ago, but yeah. it's really a word that shouldn't exist for me. Because yeah. <laughs> really, because yeah. really, everything's just right there. Yeah. And and it swings, it swings, and you have a mix. You have a mix of good and evil. Although, yeah, yeah there is good, there is evil, but God can invade the secular world. Yeah. Yeah. There's a movie I watched, yeah. The PK, because it's about Hinduism, Islam, and everything. Mm-hmm. He goes into different religion, mm-hmm. and then he said, "The one, the God who created the whole world, is the one who is worthy of 
worship. Yay! And you know, it's a secular movie but speaks to a lot. It's you will see that comedy and everything, but it would really speak a lot because this alien man has been to deeper religion. He's searching for God, worse, worse God, and everything. And bring me my remote control. Yeah. If you are really God, bring me my remote control. What I normally do as a Christian is I would try to look at the plot, and um, I would also do a research on a certain movie if I want to watch it. And check out the content and yeah. if i think that the content is good then i watch it but if i know for sure that the content is not good then i don't watch it but that's my personal conviction of course but like what ati janina said we used to say in our church that there's no such thing as a christian song there's only christian lyrics what i'm trying to say is you don't really get to categorize everything in you know, eternity is in the heart of man, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says yeah. that. So everyone, whether Hindu, Muslim, Christian, there will always be the desire yes. for meaning, the desire to search out, wait, is God real? If He exists, what is my role here on earth? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and these are things that come out in movies. I, I think like when it comes to consumption of movies, it's, I guess, less about whether the content is approved by the church or not. Or mo <laughs> yeah. It's more of what are you gonna gain from it like what mm. do you want to learn from it it boils down to intention still that's why i agree with joyce where it's good to know what you're gonna watch yeah. rather than just mindlessly going through it because yeah. like if it's mindless you know it's a waste of time unless suddenly it's really nice but like it's good to be i think it, i think it is good in, to be intentional when i was a college student i would just watch whatever because i was okay. a film student so i've seen a lot but nowadays i'm like I'm kind of a bit more picky because, well, I'm growing older, so. <laughs> so and, yeah, money, I, and money, and money, <laughs> the money factor. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's like I, I value my time more nowadays. It's yeah. like okay, I'm gonna allot two minute, uh, two hours to a movie. This better be good. And a while ago, during a, a discussion prior to the filming of this, you mentioned conviction, right? Yeah. The, yeah, the role that conviction plays when it comes to to uh, watching movies. Yeah, can we expound on that? Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> because we do well, have Christians who, who uh, watch everything and yes. those yeah. who don't and watch, don't watch all 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you guys don't watch cinema or movies or anything, that's, fine. that's fine, okay? <laughs> We're just keeping this We respect open. that. Yeah. Yeah. I used to like okay. not watch anything at all before. Uh, there was a time in my life that I did stop watching it's everything. Really cool. And <laughs> even reading, I stopped reading things. I would only read Christian literature and the Bible. So one thing that Ati Janina um, told me before actually made me realize something is that God allows us to be us. So if there is a part uh, of me that really likes to watch movies, perhaps I should still enjoy that part but then know what my boundaries are, right? So I think that's where conviction starts, knowing what our boundaries are when we are watching movies. Because you can also do that with movies, like you watch something and then you, you take in the things that you know are good to take in. Yeah, and yeah. And the things yeah. that you know are by like, mm, spit them out. Yeah, mm. but it has to be a conscious decision. Because you could also be like Joe, you know, he said, uh, I will let no vile thing come before my eyes. That's conviction. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But I think, um, yeah, there are really um, certain people that God calls to that kind of conviction because I, I um, know a friend he likes watching movies also God spoke to him and said you need to stop watching and you know what he did stop and he even like sold their television <laughs> so he would not be tempted to watch and he yeah, actually that's watched yeah. Yeah, that's conviction so there are certain people that God really calls to a certain kind of conviction not everyone is called that way per se some are Levites and some are just ordinary you know people of the tribe that doesn't make them extra special it's just that they are called to that and yeah. you are called into something else you mentioned that there was a time when you weren't reading other books or mm -hmm. just the bible oh. but again it doesn't mean that if you don't read other books it's wrong yeah, yeah. not at all yeah okay again it was on to personal conviction and i'm reminded of the verse wisdom calls out loud in the streets yes right and so that means that wisdom is available in so many different areas not just in your little house yeah. you know not just in the church yeah so but marketplace you know school and if you believe that god can speak through the director or god can speak through a script 
Huh? Then yeah, why not pick up those little pieces of mana? You know, there was this one day I was talking to God. And I remember it was during devotions time. Yeah. And I was like, Lord, why is it that you are so happy? Like the angels, especially the angels rejoice when sinners uh, come to know you. You know, aren't you okay with us who are who already know you, who are already uh, practicing the faith, you know, who come to you every day? Like, what's the big deal? I mean, it was me sounding like the older, the older brother in the the prodigal son story. And it just so happened that we had the VCD of uh, the Lion King. You know, the start where it goes ah and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You see, the animals of the kingdom start to kneel and some are rejoicing. Mm -hmm. And immediately when that scene came, I felt the Holy Spirit go, that's what happens in heaven. Wow. And immediately wow. I realized that when a person comes into the kingdom, comes, comes uh, to know the Lord, what happens is that person's entrance into an identity of royalty. For people who go, <laughs> God, I, I give you my life. They are entering into, uh, into a new phase of identity where they're like, wow, yeah, I am of royalty. I am a prince. I am a princess. And so when, when he is ushered, you know, think of this in terms of with spiritual eyes. And you have the angels going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And rightly so. Because a prince or a princess has come into his or her identity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when that revelation hit, I had to press the pause button and cry and cry. Yeah. <laughs> God used the Lion King <laughs> to tell me that. You know, the last part of LLPR? Oh. You know, the return of the king? <laughs> I'm gonna cry. You know, when, when, when they were at war <laughs> and you really think that they're going to lose, because, and then suddenly. Gandalf, like he was riding on a horse and then going uh, down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, that was part yeah. two. That was part two. Yeah. 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 It helps me. Yeah. 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 A dawn look to the east. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 So, okay, so that was part two. <laughs> that, Jesus. That was one of the scenes that I loved most on that movie. Like, it was like just hope, you know, it just bring forth hope and yeah. life and just. Gandalf is like, whoa, you're the hope. <laughs> it's very powerful. Very, yeah. very powerful. I uh, used to be an elementary teacher. I watch, when we watch Frozen, oh. and people are saying that the only thing that would heal Anna would, heal with, would, would be a true act of love. And then people are thinking, you must kiss. have kiss with somebody <laughs> whom you love. And then all of a sudden, it was a sacrifice that he that she needs to protect her sister Elsa in order for her to be saved and then mm -hmm. the curse would be gone people tend to put the erotic love the eros love so much when there's agape yeah the people tend to magnify that erotic love that i wonder how why uh, snow white rapunzel and uh Sleeping Beauty have Prince Charming. <laughs> just hey, one guy, just right? Just one guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. <laughs> oh, okay, my childhood is ruined. <laughs> yeah. For those who don't know, um, Kezun's Game actually. Ah, oh. I want to watch that tomorrow. Yes. It's history, it actually happened. Yeah. Um, they were able to do pull it off even with a really small budget. You know, it's not big, it's not Hollywood, it's not even ABS, CB, or GMA. But they chose the story, they pushed for it. I, I found myself crying in the end. Um, for those who don't know, Manuel Quezon, he, uh, he saved 1,300 Jews yeah. fleeing from Nazi oppression when America did not accept them. Mainly because America wanted to maintain a neutral stance mm -hmm. at the time. They weren't fighting anyone. This is before Japan entered the war. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, our country was the only one that accepted Jews at the time. Manuel Quezon, he died at around 1944, one year before the independent, uh, the end of World War II, right? So he never got to see his biggest dream, Philippines to become independent. So imagine, like 1939, he, he let those Jews in, and then he wasn't even able to see the fruits of that. But then fast forward to 2009, the, or to, somewhere in the 21st century, they erect a monument in Israel dedicated yeah. to the Philippines Whoa. for... Uh, for um, doing that deed, 
when no one else would. He, I guess he would yeah. call him the Filipino Schindler, yes. in a way. Yeah. When the state of Israel was about to be established in, I think, 46, 48? 46. 46. Mm-hmm. Um, we're the only ASEAN, yeah. Asian country to vote, vote. Yeah. to for vote for them to be partitioned. Yeah. So double whammy na yun. So it's like when I heard about the the old monument being built, like almost half a century after Quezon made the decision, I was crying. I was like, man, like sometimes the sacrifices we make, we really do not see the fruit yeah. until many years later. So it's like sometimes Christians are discouraged. Na ah, what am I doing? I'm not. You haven't the seen the big picture. Yeah, of yeah, doing. but like. It impacts people, and in the credits of the film, it includes snippets of the descendants and even some mm. of the Jews that got saved. They came from Shanghai, they went here. And, it, and they're like, they credit a lot because of Quezon. Wow, our country was, um, was used for that purpose. Yeah. Our mm. tiny archipelago, complete, like you mentioned before, completely stripped away from Germany. We didn't have to do anything, we had no obligation, but Quezon said it was the right thing to do. And yeah. like the, the rewards of that, the fruits of that were reaped. Afterwards, and so mm-hmm. we have a strong relationship with Israel and everything. God will reward you. Eh? God yeah. will your, reward your efforts. Kai yeah. yeah. So that's what really hit me, and it's like, wow, me as an individual, like maybe I'm not the president of the Philippines, but God, if your heart is willing and if you're surrendered to Him, God can use you too. And sometimes you won't see the fruits of that within your lifetime or sooner than you think, but there is a promise that it will bear fruit. Yeah. In in the end. Yeah. Maybe not the way you see it, but it will happen. Okay, so guys, this is uh, yeah, this is what we get for watching movies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we uh, are able to draw out uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm reminded of the verse, "My sheep hear my voice." Yes. You know, and uh, yeah, if we can hear the Lord speak to us through movies, then yes, let us watch movies and let us champion the movies that really have good stuff to mm-hmm. tell. Yeah, yeah, things of the kingdom. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. That's it. Uh, uh, thank you so much for watching our table talk. Thank please you. Uh, click on the links below. Uh, Smash that subscribe button. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Follow please. us on Facebook. Yes. And like our memes yeah. and yeah. The videos. And yeah. go to our website. <laughs> go to our website. Yeah. Okay. So till next time, guys. Bye. Goodbye. Shalom. <laughs> <laughs>